believe it or not, this is the first thing that started this whole adventure up on Russ's mountain. <laughs> and it's the last thing that we're planting. <laughs> Russ, tell me a little bit about these. <clears throat> okay, these trees are 100% uh, uh, American chestnut that were provided by the New York chapter of the American Chestnut Foundation. And uh, they've been working with the university there that developed the Darling 58 Transgenic. But the problem with the Darling 58 Transgenic is they are clones. So they all have the exact same genotype. These are 100% American, and they're therefore not blight resistant. But typically, a seedling like this will live long enough to flower uh, for at least a few years. <clears throat> and so, this, uh, but these are, this is from a genetically diverse stock of uh, chestnut seeds. Uh, uh, Alan Nichols is the president of the New York chapter, and uh, he has collected over, he collected over 5,000 viable seed from various sources. Uh, to provide these mother trees that will have the genetic, add the genetic diversity when they hybridize with the uh, uh, Darling 58s, which are hopefully going to be approved within a year or two. Um, so these are going to be planted. We've got nine of them. I had ten, but uh, the, my, the mice got one of them because I left them out about an hour too late one night. Oh, Lord. I forgot them. <laughs> <laughs> I went rushing out and it was too late. One of them had already been chewed up by mice. They love chestnuts, which is why we have the predator guards, which you'll see later. But um, uh, anyway, the uh, <coughs> that's the mouse-proof part right there. The buckets? Yeah, the buckets. Yeah, these are... Which Russ has cut the bottoms out of. <laughs> yeah, these are pushed into the ground about two inches. I'm gonna probably do a little trenching. Uh, if they ever tip up, uh, can you stop that for a second? Or uh, put into the ground, and this time we're gonna to try to put them in maybe an inch and a half, two inches, mm -hmm. to uh, prevent the uh, rodents from burrowing under, mm -hmm. right. or jumping over okay. to get to the seedling. And uh, what happens if you if if you don't install these properly, which apparently I didn't do on one of the cages, this is a two-year-old hybrid American chestnut that I planted well two year two years ago <laughs> okay. as a seed, and it was doing just fine until this spring. I when I checked on it, it wasn't mm -hmm. leafing out, and. Uh, I said, well, wait a minute, what's going on? Because the bucket's there. So I went inside the little Fort Knox that we're going to build. <laughs> With that wire. Went through the bear fence, and uh, I touched the bucket, and I realized that it had tilted some in the two years, and there was a gap of about an inch underneath. And just enough. The corner of the bucket. And then wow. I pulled on the top, and there was... No roots at all. Mm -hmm. The entire root system was eaten off and the thing started eating up the bark wow. on the side. So uh, chestnuts apparently are highly desirable food for uh, whatever these creatures are, ground squirrels, uh, whatever. But uh, They are not practicing deferred gratification. <laughs> they are not. <laughs> oh, no. They are not. But uh, they are our number one enemy. So as we have said before uh, plastic attracts bears right and that's why we have all these t posts and these two rolls of wire over here uh, we're going to cut each one of these 100 foot rolls into five 20 foot sections and craft an approximately six foot in diameter uh, mini fortress around each of the nine that we plant today hopefully <laughs> by four of these T-posts, which are six feet long, and they'll be driven into the ground, uh, hopefully 18 inches, but we'll see what we can do with our driving tool. Okay. And uh, then the cage will be strung around it, wired to each T-post, 
and, uh, and then it can be wired shut uh, so that I can open it up if I want to go inside afterwards. Right, for checking on but, uh, what everybody's doing. <laughs> First thing we do is plant the tree and put in the bucket, then uh, build, the, build, a fence. build a fence. So All that's right. that's what our mission is today. All right, we're going to get after it and I'll film some more as we progress on this amazing project which is the last thing of this project. And Russ will tell us more about how this all happened. <laughs> Just finished cutting this whole thing apart. What do you say, Russ? Yeah, that's <laughs> great. Now I'll just take a snapshot. And once again, here we have some snackage on the side of the trail. The whole food industry has no clue what they're missing. <laughs> Wow. Mm. Russ is going to wonder where I'm at. <laughs> this is a blue cohosh. It's already bloomed out. Um, see the, uh, the berries coming off. And right next to it is black cohosh. You can see the difference in the leaves. I'm gonna look and see if there's another blue one with more berries. Yeah, you can see the, the berries on this one a little bit better. Okay, here we go. I'm starting the first, the first hole. And okay, I'll cut it loose this time. All right, I'm gonna bring a a bag out here so we don't lose all the soil. Uh, the first one in the ground. I should have put my ears on. I can't hear you. <laughs> That's okay. I'm not you, talking you, smack about You're talking about. to you, right? <laughs> I'm not talking to smack about you. I'm not worried about that. You can talk smack about me all you want. I want to poach this dirt. <laughs> All right, hold on, let me get some water. Drink deeply. <laughs> All right. Let that soak in. I'll put the top layer on there with all its little Violet Companions. Mm -hmm. Cool. Ooh, I hit a rock or something. Bam! That's it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We've done it. This is the last one. Everybody is in a bucket to protect them from small rodents and the bucket is being protected from the bears with the wire caging. We are good to hike our tools out of here. We came down to the lower property where Russ actually has an apple orchard, although you can't see it from here. And we're putting one more of the chestnuts in down here. In the pipe. Oh yeah, it's got some good roots on it. I guess that looks like chestnut, huh? Yeah, all right. So it's going to go right in there. This is amazing. I've never seen this before. Yeah. I've never seen it before. I've got the, um, yeah, it's definitely a locust. Yeah. Wow, look at this. Very clearly.
this is not a locust. There are no thorns and the flowers are not correct, but no idea what this is. So any of y'all watching this, um, the shrub is about five feet tall. Uh, the flowers are very fragrant. Um, the leaves look very similar to a locust, but it's not. And I have no clue who this is. <laughs> So if y'all, anybody knows who this is, please uh, leave the note in the comments. Thank you. Okay, we're up on the second half of this project. We've planted the first chestnut, got all that situated. Russ is inside the wire cage, <laughs> cutting the thin wires that are gonna go on this T-post to lock the fence in place. And, um, and the next one's going over there, and then we've got another one. Hopefully Down I'll there. remember to get out of the cage before I... Yes, <laughs> we'll get you out of the cage. <laughs> Russ is using the chainsaw and his dog's over here <laughs> digging right next to me to make a little nest for herself because it's getting warm. Okay, we're planting tree number two of the second location. Look at that root. Whoa, nice. Really nice. Yeah, that's the inner, inner dirt. Under dirt? Under dirt, inner dirt. <laughs> A little bit on the side, too. There's a little bit right here. There's a little bit right here I'm going to get rid of. Yeah, there's one on the other bag as well. Okay. Whoops. Oh, I heard it. I didn't hurt it. Okay. First drink. The first drink of the day. Man, look at those side limbs. This I know. This a, one is going to be it's awesome. It's going to be a bush. It's going to be awesome. So, uh, well, the middle one's. Yeah, it's got a leader. Too, so we're all right. It's got a leader. The birds singing in the background. There's a northern parula. And a, a rose-breasted grosbeak off in the distance. Hey, baby. You got water over there. What are you doing? Just checking in? There she is. This right here is a small sproutling of American chestnut that's come up from a stump in the ground an original American chestnut that was out here and the tree itself was killed out by the blight. However, life remains in the roots for quite some time and they will continue to send up these sprouts. So Russ's plan was knowing that this tree is here as a possible source of pollen because it will, it will reach a size where it will be able to do that before the blight knocks it back again. That's why he chose to plant the ones um, on the other side of the little trail that we ride up and down on Rhonda. And as those reach maturity and produce pollen, this one will also be here. And fingers crossed that this is gonna work. And then in a few years, the clone tree will also become available. So when I started filming this yesterday, I said that this was the very last thing we were gonna do. But actually there's one more thing we're doing. And what is that? Is this a quiz? <laughs> no. No, tell me about the final tree that we'll be putting in oh, okay. potentially the, in two, oh, okay. two yeah, years sure. from now, right? Yeah. 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 That. That little thing. Uh, yeah. Well, we what we have is uh, these 100% American chestnuts. And they are going to provide the genetic diversity that we need to actually have a successful restoration program. The uh, miracle tree, or whatever you want to call it, that's coming in a year or two, the Darling 58, which is the darling of everybody that loves chestnuts right now. Well, not everybody, but most people. Is, uh, <laughs> it's a clone, which means all of them are genetically identical. 
Mm. And that means that, uh, and well, genetically identical populations are low genetic diverse, diversity populations. That's probably the better way to say it. Populations with low genetic diversity are more susceptible to uh, extinction, dying off, and diseases and things. Genetic diversity gives uh, protection to some extent against diseases and things like that. So the one thing that the Darling 58 brings to the uh, equation for the chestnut is the resistance. And that's the whole purpose of this, the way we're doing this, is to take the resistance from a clone and uh, cross, it with the... cross it with the diversity of, uh, of uh, chestnuts that are susceptible to a little bit more right here too. The canker. Oh yeah. Look at this guy. This guy right here. That's what the idea is. So when these these get old enough to produce flowers, well we're hoping to get the Darling 58 uh, super trees, I guess if you want to call them that, uh, approved within the next year or so. Mm -hmm. And then they, uh, as, as a participant in this program, I've agreed to do what I'm, what we're doing here today, create these, uh, uh, orchards, they're called mother tree orchards, and, uh, when they, usually only 100% Americans, they will survive uh, until they're of seed producing, flowering and seed producing age. And so we're hoping to get a few generations of uh, hybrid seeds between the Darling 58 and the, uh, and the uh, mother trees, the 100% uh, mother trees, 100% American. So that's, that's what the that's what the plan is. Well, this sedge is in an unfortunate place. Oh, there we go. Anyway, uh, so that's that's what we're hoping for is some generations of that. And the seeds produced by the offspring of the uh, crossing of the Darling 58 with 100% American, approximately 50% of those seeds will produce uh, blight resistant uh, chestnut trees. Right. So what we've got here, this is the last one we're doing. So there's, there's one there, there's one there, there's one there, and here in the center is where the Darling 58 tree will be planted once Russ receives it. And that'll be in a few years. We'll have one other segment about the American chestnut restoration, uh, but it's still in the editing process. So I hope you all enjoyed this little excursion up Russ's mountain for uh, planting the chestnut trees that really started this whole thing for him. And uh, we'll see you in the next video, hopefully not too long. All right, bye for now. Yeah. Oh, bye for now. <laughs>